Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Um, the users were polled in 2019 and then polled again in 2020 after COVID has hit. So we can see how things have shifted and then we can correlate that data together with mm -hmm. how people are actually using social media these days. So we look at 2019, mm -hmm. look at 2020, and then look at actual data on some of these, these accounts to see how people are using their accounts. So we all post on Facebook, or hopefully we all do. Facebook social media posting uh, before COVID was kind of a, yeah, I'll post now and then, or maybe I have an account, maybe I don't. But right now, Facebook and social media, because of COVID, has become critical uh, for most businesses in getting their message out there and getting their products out to people. Um, this, this slide here are the best times to post on Facebook. And we can see, if you can see my cursor, before COVID, the time was, the best time for Facebook was generally Wednesday, a little bit around 11, and then after 1 p.m., 1 to 2 p.m. were the most popular times uh, to post early 2020. And then after COVID hit, you could see the shift. Everyone's coming online very early. The best times to post are now Monday, Wednesday, Friday, early in the morning from 10 to 11 a.m. And uh, all of this data, uh, a qualifier here is this, this data is based on average use. So you might have a, some, a different experience with your Facebook channel. Um, it doesn't fit for everybody, but in general, these are the best times to post. People love these next few slides. This one, the Facebook best times to post, because people always ask me, when should I post? How should I post? What should I post? And we're going to touch on all of those things uh, as we go through the slides today. But the best times to post, you could see shifted right before COVID. It was 1 to 2 p.m. And after COVID has hit and everyone's at home, you can see people are waking up and getting on Facebook 10 to 11. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Let me see here. Instagram, a little slightly different. Friday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. was before, and now it seems to hit Monday, Tuesday, and Friday right around 11. And then a little after 2 p.m. These are peak uses of Instagram. Twitter. The 2020 average, 9 a.m., 9 a.m. on Friday. And then now, after COVID, starts as early as 7 a.m. And this is uh, LinkedIn. You could see the shift here, too. Here's the times beforehand. And the darker areas are the times after COVID hit. Um, I put these slides up there so you could use them. You'd be able to access this. We'll put it on the URA social media channels, access to this uh, PowerPoint presentation. But you can use these times to determine when are probably the best times that your customers are going to be on social media. As we know, social media works with timelines. So if you get on social media at 10 o'clock, say 10 p.m. and post something, people around 10 p.m who follow you or your friends will probably see that post pop up, but they might not see it if they come on at a different time. So you kind of want to try to use your social media channels to reach your customers the best way that you can. And you can find uh, most of this information in your Facebook insights, which I'll talk about shortly. But you take these slides, you look at your customer base, and you just try to determine when's the best time to reach my customers. When are they online? And if you go with some of this data, they probably fall into most of these categories. Generally, people kind of work the same way, especially with COVID. We're all waking up, having coffee, taking a shower, jumping online right away to check our emails, check our social media, see what's happening. That might, as you could see, that was a little bit later before COVID hit. I get this question a lot too. How often should we post to social media? Uh, well, studies of this group of studies, once per day is the optimal amount to post. So once per day, if you can hit during those key times, that would be good, with a maximum of two posts per day. Uh, HubSpot, which is a huge social media firm, 
uh, found that pages with under 10,000 fans experienced a 50% drop in engagement per post if they posted more than once per day. What does that mean? That means people love hearing that first post if you're a smaller business, but they don't want to see that second post too much. <laughs> now, these are strictly posts. These are straight posts. They're not stories. They're not videos or anything like that. This is just a static post. It could have a video in it or something, but just a post. At a minimum, you should post to your Facebook pages three times per week if you cannot do it daily. This, these are all post-COVID stats. So before this, the average uh, was three times per week that you should post. That says this is the, this is the minimum, but the, the, the maximum you should post before COVID hit was three times a week. Now they're saying you should post at least daily to get your information out there. So if you look at your insights, find the best time that your users are online. If that's 10 to 11, if it's two to three, make sure you're scheduling your post to go out at that time every day so you can hit these people who are uh, looking at your business, your customers. You can stop me at any time. This is a, there's a lot of numbers, but feel free to, to ask me a question. Stop me in the middle of this. <clears throat> While some posting has gone down, engagement rates have gone up. So 44 more engagements received per day on average across all networks and industries. That means when someone does a post, oops, when someone does a post, you're getting about 44 more engagements on a post than you would before uh, COVID hit. So an engagement is a like, a little thumbs up, someone sharing your post, someone commenting on your post, anything like that is considered an engagement. So most people, when they are posting now, they're getting 44 more on average engagements than they did before. Uh, 7.3 more engagements per post per day on average across all networks and industries. What that, uh, how I correlate that a little bit is, and I see it on all the posts that we do, people are, are more active on social media because it's their outlet right now. It's their way to reach other people. It's their way to comment on things and interact with others. So they're engaging more with people's posts. They're gonna engage more with your posts as well. Uh, social media, as you know, is the way to reach your audience. It's a way to reassess what you're doing and, to, and with COVID to retool what you're doing. This is an example of a good post on Twitter. We talk about what, social, what you can do as a social media person, you're your social media manager for your business. You can evaluate your content plan. That's talking about when you post and how often you post. And then they talk, uh, engagement wise, they talk about imagining each of your posts sandwich on social media. So you can talk about engaging information. What is your business doing with COVID-19? then list some of your, uh, what you're doing, and then list your content that you want your user to look at. And then you can list something else about COVID-19. Look at your post, always scrap it if it feels tone deaf. And what does that mean? That means if your post, no matter what your political beliefs are, if your post doesn't feel like it's going to reach your customers, scrap it. Try not to post just to post. And that's hard because we're, we're hearing that we should post daily, but we wanna make sure the posts are reaching our customer, reaching our audience so that they can engage with them. And with posting these days, it's always good to have something about your COVID plan, how you're engaging with COVID, how your customers should behave or act at your business, uh, and generally how you're working with this pandemic. They wanna hear what you're doing then see your content and, and make them feel like they're part of it or part of what's going on in your business. Use of web and social platforms right now are the primary tools for reaching your customers. This was even before COVID, although it felt a little different before COVID, we didn't feel so perhaps claustrophobic. Uh, but social media has overtaken the print ad, has overtaken video, television ads as the primary way of reaching your customer. Most successful businesses these days, 
uh, have a Google My Business account. Google My Business, you've seen that if you've searched the web before. Up on the right, a bit, if you search for uh, law and company, landscaping, or uniforms, on the right, the name of a business will come up. You'll see their name. They have reviews under it, maybe some posts and pictures. Uh, every business should have a Google My Business page. It helps with your Google search ranking. It allows you to post information to your customers there. And it allows you to respond to reviews and see what customers think about your business. Every business, should, these are successful businesses. Every successful business typically has social media pages. You should reach your customers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whichever uh, social media platform kind of fits in with your business. That's how you should reach them. All successful businesses have a Facebook page from the, from the top on down, whether you're GE, a huge conglomerate to a small business, everybody has a Facebook page. It is basically the new yellow pages of today. You know, let your fingers do the walking. Well, let them do the walking on Facebook. Everybody searches on Facebook for businesses. Make sure you have your Facebook Messenger turned on. Almost 90% of customers want a business that reacts within one to two hours of them posing a question. When you have a Facebook page, you can turn on Facebook Messenger, and this allows your customers to reach out to you instantly and ask you a question. Hey, do you have this top in stock? Hey, do you have a stethoscope in stock? We get these all the time. A lot of my customers are getting these questions constantly. They want to know, hey, do I, have to, do I wear a mask when I come to your shop? What are your new hours because of COVID? These are all the things you want to address in that previous slide I showed you COVID information that you sandwich between your posts. Well, that's the kind of thing you want to do. You want to put your COVID hours. Do people have to wear a mask? What are the rules at your business or the rules of your area as far as COVID goes? Include that in, your, in these, those messages like the previous slide. Um, but back to this, Facebook Messenger is key. People are going to ask you questions on Facebook and Instagram or any of your platforms that you have available, and you want to respond to those within one to two hours. These are just general statistics. Some people take longer. You might be a sole proprietor and can't always be on social media, but you want to have that option available for customers so you can answer their questions and they feel like they have a direct line of communication with you and can engage with you as a business. So Facebook Messenger, you want to have Google Analytics. Google Analytics allows you to see how many people are coming to your website. All of these things that I'm listing for you here are free tools. None of these require you to pay anything. You can set all of these up for free. Google Analytics, so you could see who's coming to your website, where they're coming from. You want to post daily, as a couple slides back said. You can post uh, daily to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can do posts on Google My Business. You can do posts on LinkedIn. If you're using email, you want to have your uh, email set up. They say email is dying, but if you send out 500 emails and you get two responses from that and people come and buy stuff, well, that's a great response rate. Email these days is, is very difficult and the average open rate on an email is 2%. So when you're sending out an email and you get your stats back, if you've seen this before on Constant Contact or MailChimp, you'll see the open rate is usually under 5% and you kind of get discouraged. Oh, email's no good. Well, that 2% of people still wants to engage with your business that way. And it can seem mind boggling because there's all these channels to reach your customers, but you want to try to hit all these channels. And that's what I'm trying to say with this slide is most of the successful businesses I see have their hand in the door on all of these channels and try to respond and reach their customers on all of these channels. So make sure you can use email as a platform too. collect the emails when they come into your business, add them to your email list, send people an email each week when you're having a special. If you're doing a, some kind of a special, make sure you send it out to all the channels at the same time. Put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram, send an email, add it to your website or your Facebook page. 
make sure you're spreading the word out there and reaching people through these channels. And uh, personally, we recommend just like uh, earlier, we recommend five posts a week, four emails a month, and at least one blog post to Facebook or your website per month. Those numbers typically see the highest rate of search engine return if you're posting that frequently. So if, if you're doing those posts, if you're doing the emails and doing the blog posts, your website will typically go up in the search rankings higher than your competitors who might not be doing those things. And this is a, a whole bunch of information. Do we have any questions yet? Comments, am I going way too fast for people? Too slow? All right. <laughs> Where am I? Back to posting. The 80-20 rule is still the golden rule. It's 80% of the time you want to post engaging items, 20% of the time you want to directly sell. The informational posts, let me move ahead here. This is an example of 80-20 posting. So this is our brand here. So 80% of the time on the left here, we're posting just an informative post that engages people. Uh, the average American spends more than 10 hours a day using an electronic device. This might not be engaging to you, but to people who read our social media channel, they like this kind of information. They want to see statistics, uh, general things of what's going on. So an engaging post or 80% engagement rate or 80% engagement post means 80% of your posts should be on general information. Maybe it's happy 4th of July. Maybe it's today is a nurse's day. Maybe it's something that's going on in your local area. And then 20% of your posts should be directly selling your product. So 80% of the time I'm posting stuff like that's on the left, just general information that people like. And then 20% of the time I'm posting what's on the right, a direct link to my products and what we're selling. And people typically respond to this better than if you directly always post about what you're selling. If your social media feed is every day you post, hey, today's 10% off, today's 20% off, come buy our stuff, come buy our stuff, come buy our stuff, people are gonna tune you out. So you wanna provide other information that people enjoy, wanna share, or wanna see, in addition to your direct sales techniques. So the 80-20 rule, still in effect uh, during COVID-19, it still works really well when coming up with a posting plan. And that works the same as on uh, email as social media. When you're on social media, you do a post, 80% of them are um, engagement. When you post an email, 80% of your email should be general information. It could be a link to your blog post that's about a, some subject matter. And then 20% of that email could be information about what you're selling or what you're pushing to your customers. Monitor your posts for effectiveness effectiveness on facebook these are this is a different tool and we'll get down to a slide but on facebook there's what's called facebook insights twitter has insights linkedin and it basically tells you how well your posts are doing so when you do a post you can go and look at your post stats like reach likes and you can see which one of your posts did the best over the certain amount of time that you set. this one's the past 30 days so I could see in the past 30 days, this one's from, or this is longer than that, this is like 90 days, but this post in May had 4,315 reach, 57 likes, six shares, and 414 clicks. So you can sort these by these columns and determine which was my best post for that time frame. And you do that because when you come up with your best post, you want to try to mimic that post in future posts so people engage more with that content. You always want to try to deliver the best content to your customers, and that's why you want to monitor your post for effectiveness. 
it's good to just post stuff, but you always want to look back at them and see which posts work best. You do the same with ads, you do the same with emails. As you send stuff out, you kind of look at it to see what worked and what didn't work. You probably do it with uh, some of your stuff right now. Maybe you do it with a, a display at your store or something else you're doing. You always try to monitor for effectiveness. I'm gonna, these are a couple tools. This is the a monitor, monitoring your page. You can monitor how many likes you have. You can see organic versus paid likes, audience growth, the average age of your audience. You can use all of this information to come up with better posts or maybe advertising. Uh, if you're gonna run an ad, if you do a boost, you can select these items on your boosts. Male, female, I'm gonna jump over to the Facebook Insights. You've probably all seen this on your Facebook page if you log in and go to settings. Oh, you have a question? Yeah, Joe, we do have a question. Sure. Does product information you are not directly selling fall in the 80% or the 20%? It's the 80%. So if you're just providing information on a product, say um, a new scrub line, uh, types of material, how effective something is, something that people can find informational, you can count that as engagement. Thank you. Um, and that, that, that's a great question because it ties in perfectly with what you're doing. If you're selling scrubs, people want to know about the scrubs and the manufacturers, where they come from, what the material is. All of that can be very engaging to someone who's involved in scrubs or wants to know about scrubs. Uh, feel free to bring in items like that, make videos, I think, uh, Melanie, your store, you did a video of how water repellent some of the scrubs were. That was an extremely engaging post for people. Now, on the bottom end of that, you know you're trying to sell that product, but you're giving them something entertaining to watch, to look at, and learn about the scrubs. So this, this scrub's very water repellent. It was a funny little video. People loved it. Very engaging. But not and, and on the bottom end, you are selling, but you're not saying, hey, come buy this water repellent scrub. It's 20% off right now. <laughs> so in their mind, they think, oh, I'm getting information. And that's kind of how you have to think about all of them. How are you delivering this? What's the message? So that's a, that's a great question. Um, this is the Facebook Insights page. This is available to everyone for free if you have Facebook. If you go to your page under settings, up top there on the top menu bar, you can see insights and you can set this to the last seven days, the last 28 days, a couple other options in there. But you can see your page views, your page previews, your page likes, how many people your posts have reached, your post engagement, followers, videos, oops. And then if you drop down to the next, so that the last page here, this one, is the overview, but if you come down to posts, you can see which of your posts are doing the best. And when I said earlier to monitor your posts, this is the tool that you can use for free to see how many people and how effective or engaging posts might be. So go to your Facebook page. You always wanna look at this at least every seven days. If you have time, daily to see how your posts are doing and take the best posts and copy them try to make those pet best posts even better to increase your reach and your engagement for your customers these are all free tools here's the insights i talked about on your page overview it once again is this shows your general statistics what you want to see is your page views, your page likes, and everything going up over time. If you're doing it right, all your statistics are going up, your followers are going up, your page views, your previews, and your reach is always going up. But then you can also look at followers. You could see how your ads are doing on Facebook if you're running advertisements. Your reach, page views, previews, actions on a page, or likes engagement, shares, things like that. If you have events going on, you can check all of that under Insight. If you haven't looked at that on your Facebook page, I highly suggest it. And earlier we talked about Messenger. 
Facebook Messenger, this is also where it comes. It comes right into your inbox on Facebook. If people ask questions about your brand or business, you can come over to Facebook and go to inbox and you can answer their questions directly. A lot of times these will be simple questions like when you're open, when you close, you can set up automated responses in Facebook to answer these questions for people. So in the inbox, you can set up automations and automations are to, if you click on, if someone sends you a message, it'll send them a list of questions. What time am I open? When do I close? Do I have to wear a mask? Uh, do I have this product in stock? People can click on those questions and it'll automatically answer them for them. So you don't necessarily have to respond. And then it'll say, do you need something else? And they can ask a more in-depth question if they want to, or, le or give you the phone number or the website. So this is Facebook Insights. It's under your page. Insights, your inbox. Lead Center is if you're running advertisements. And this is all under your page in the settings area. This was, there's so much information to present, but I wanted to give you an overhaul, overall view of what's happened with COVID uh, since March and April. So that was about a 30 minute presentation. We talked about people are getting up earlier. We see the posting times have changed. The engagement versus uh, direct advertising has stayed about the same, but social media use and internet use is way up. So now is the time, if you haven't yet, to start posting on Facebook, to get your message out there, to get your website in shape. Because frankly, for most people, it's the only avenue you have right now to reach your customers. Um, I can answer questions on any of this. I can answer questions on anything you have. If you want to talk about Snapchat, you want to talk about LinkedIn, anything I didn't cover, anything I did cover, I can answer questions about marketing, website best practices, Anything you want to talk about? Questions, anyone? <laughs> I know that's a lot of information to take in. We have a question in the chat. Okay. How do you feel about TikTok? TikTok is great. It has seen explosive growth. I know there's some political aspects behind TikTok. There's even some talk of TikTok being banned. I don't know what's going to happen with that, but TikTok is a great tool for reaching a younger audience, say 25 and below. If you have an active TikTok account, trying to reach people, trying to reach maybe uh, younger people in the medical industry or people in school right now who are gonna graduate and become in the medical industry, it's great. If you have the time to make those videos on TikTok, because it's very time intensive, then do it. TikTok is a great tool. And you can tie it all together on TikTok. You can also mention your website, obviously, and your Facebook page. Do you set up an account on TikTok and then post videos to it? Is that the way, it, is it like a Facebook kind of thing? Yeah, so you, you just set up an account. Uh, we have one that's called The Real Social Company. And you just go on there and you can post, you can kind of post static things, but people engage more with video content on TikTok. So you can do videos of scrub lines, you can do videos of what's happening at your store if you're having an event, uh, and, and people like it. It tends to be a little bit uh, funnier than, say, Facebook or LinkedIn. LinkedIn's very static and stoic in the type of posts that they have. TikTok, you have more of a free reign to do funny things, and I think that's why people like to engage with it a little bit more. So. If you do make TikTok, you know, feel free to, to do something cool or funny or try new things there. It's a great avenue for that. Okay. I know a lot of information, maybe uh, dead stairs. Uh, but huh. you have questions about your website, how things interact. Yeah, we've, we've got another question here. Okay. Best way to use live video on Facebook or Instagram. Please give some examples. Oh yeah, a live video is perfect. People love unboxing things. So I've seen some really good videos where you get packages from UPS, you're streaming live, you open these packages for say a new line of scrubs 
and you're unboxing it live and showing people. People love that. Open the box. Don't, don't feel, people have a tendency to feel kind of stupid when they're on video, but don't feel stupid. Just unbox it, show the line, talk about it, compare it to other stuff you have, and just do it live. You'll get comments and you can schedule that. If you know you get uh, items in every Thursday, you could say, hey, every Thursday we're having a live stream of the new products we have coming in. And, and it works great. And you can do that with anything. It doesn't have to be unboxing. You could say every Thursday we have a live stream where we do questions and answers and do the same thing. People can post a question. Hey, do you have this scrub or what have you found works best for this type of thing? Or say, uh, what do most people buy for surgical scrubs? And you could do a live stream about, about that. You could do a live stream of people talking in the industry. If you have a guest come in, like, maybe someone who you know who works in the medical field, you could have them come and talk on your live stream. It, people love it. Live streaming is great. And uh, that takes me back to something else. I talked about posting a lot here. The posts that work best are always video posts. Video posts typically get 500% or more engagement than a static image post. So don't be afraid to post videos of yourself being silly, showing your scrubs, even if you're just walking around not showing your face and talking about stuff, do those videos and do it and you can do it live. How long should that video last? What, what's the time frame? As long as you have good information, I've seen people watch things for 45 minutes to an hour. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you can show people stuff and they will watch. Uh, the, one of the key things with this, people are at home right now and they want stuff to do. And if they're interested in your subject, they're gonna watch it. So if you have good uh, scrub lines, there's the Uniform Retailer, so we're talking about scrubs, show them the scrubs, take them around your store, talk about your store history, talk about what you've done with your community. There's so much to talk about. Um, if you have employees, you could have them be the star of the video. You know, what does this employee think about what's going on or anything like that? You could. As long as your customers know you're filming them, you can have them sign a little waiver. You could talk to your customers, you know, hey, what do you do today? People watch anything. And if, and if any of you have kids, you know that they're on the videos, just watching and watching all the time. <laughs> and the adults are like that too. They want to see information about who you are, uh, what you're doing. Um, overall, social media has democratized business for everybody. It's created a connection to people they never had connections to before. It's created a channel to interact with brands and business uh, in a way that we've never seen in the, in the history of business. People want to know what you're about, where you stand, what you're doing, what you're selling, and, and, and they love it. So use it to your advantage. Um, there's this idea that you have to be this, uh, I'll use the word again, stoic brand. You don't have to be. You can you could show your personality as a business on your channels. And people love that. The more personalized they feel, the better and or the more they will relate to your business. <laughs> I've seen brand like you see it, Adidas, Nike, even the huge conglomerates. They do funny videos, they do crazy things online. It doesn't matter. I've seen a video of a guy who live streams has him eating lunch every day. He gets like 300 people watching them. It's just crazy. <laughs> but you could do all of that. Unbox your scrubs, man. Every time they come in, show them. Even if it's not live, if you video and put it up later, people are going to watch it. Huh. Yes. Next question. How do you get more reviews on the Google business page? some creative ways maybe in store? Yeah, Google reviews are very, uh, very right now. So it's the best way to get reviews is when you're interacting with people at the cash register or checkout point of sale time. Hey, leave us a review on Google. Or you could say, hey, do you have your phone with you? And almost everybody does. Would you mind leaving us a review? If they had a good experience, 90% or more of those people are going to leave you a good review right then and there. They don't have to leave a, a long thing. Uh, they can even just leave five stars. 
but Facebook and Google are always right there on their phone, the best time to do it is right at point of sale when they've had that great experience with you or your, your workers. And another question uh, here, Joe, how to set up product pricing on Instagram and Facebook <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> buy directly from social media. Uh, so that is a, a larger process. I, I'll definitely could send you some links if you want to leave your email, uh, but you need to have your Facebook business page set up first, and then you have to, it's a long process. You have to give them all your business information and make sure they understand that you're legit. And then they'll give you a, an e-commerce section that then you can add products to and then link from Instagram over to Facebook. But if you uh, leave your email after this, I'll gladly send you some links on how to do that. It's not hard to do, but it does take about a day to get everything in place. Or actually, Joe, if you want to give me your email address, I will type it into the oh, chat sure. um, and anybody can pick it up from there. Yep, the best one is joemurphy99 at icloud.com. That's my personal one, you, Joe Murphy, and that's, that's it right there. Okay. If you email me any of your questions, I'll gladly send you links or help you with any of this stuff. Um, there you go. All right. But yeah, it's, that is a great thing to do. If you have products, and you all do, Uniform Retailers Association, it is great to get your products on Facebook. They can buy directly from Facebook. And then once you have your catalog set up, you can link them in Instagram too. So if you post a picture on Instagram, you'll see it'll have a little dot. It links directly to your product and people can buy your products directly from Facebook and Instagram. There is of course a fee with all of that, but uh, that's a, you can't get away from fees these days, right? <laughs> great, great question there, Tanil. Um, here's another question. We email our customers with a link to our Google page, or I guess it's not a question. Um, comment back to try to get the, uh, your Google ratings up. Yes. Yeah. On Google, my business, if you go over to the review section, there's a little area where you can get your link. So if you send out an email weekly or put a Facebook post up, you can request Google reviews as well. They typically don't get as much engagement as that direct contact point of sale uh, time, but it is a good practice as well to always include that in an email or at least weekly on a Facebook, Instagram post for people to come and review you. Anytime you can put your information and links in front of people is great. So never, never feel bad about doing it. But the only way you're gonna get reviews typically is if you do something wrong, or if you ask for good ones. <laughs> we all get the bad ones. <laughs> what about newspapers, Joe? Is that a, a thing of the past? Is it still worth it? I don't, I think it's totally worth it. We advertise in the Clintonville Times in the local area, we advertise quite a bit. Uh, if it's affordable, I would do it. I wouldn't go paying $500 for a half page ad in the Tribune or whatever but there's a lot of local papers around your area that target maybe your demographic. Those are great. They're usually $50 to $150, $200 from what I see in the price range. Those are great ads. They sit in the paper. I've had someone call me from a paper that was six months old. So you get your longevity there. I don't think it's a bad thing. If you have the funds to put out into that category as well. I always recommend digital first, but if you have some extra funds, definitely do some print ads too. The more you can round, well round your campaign, the better you are. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, print, maybe some banners, and just keep circling around and see where your niche is. You'll start seeing people say, hey, I saw you on Facebook or I saw you here. And you gather that information from those insights we were talking about or from people saying, I found it in the paper. And if that works best for you, then continue putting your funds there or increase the funding there. Perfect. Well, I picked up a lot of tips and I hope some of you did as well. Um, we've still got a couple of minutes. If anybody wants to unmute their phone or type into the chat, Joe would be happy to field your questions. 
Got to gotta have my uh, my water here. My beer. I mean beer. <laughs> You're telling me Hello, beer. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Thank Hi. you so much. That information was really, really helpful. Oh, thank you. Um, but I do have a question. Um, like, so I haven't done it yet since the whole COVID has happened and we're new, we're a new scrub store and we're still trying to get into like the hospitals and things. So do you have any suggestions on the best ways to, I guess, contact them right now or just use an email, but are there any creative ways that anyone's using to, um, you know, contact the right person in these hospitals or? Yeah, that's, you know, there's a lot of interesting ways to reach people like that. You, you can actually run advertisements about your business to a, a less than one mile radius on Facebook. So you can run an, an ad that's going to hit everybody at one hospital. And I've seen people, pardon me, I've seen people use this for getting hired at places. They'll advertise themselves to a company they want to work for. But in Facebook, you can set the radius of your ad. You can advertise to only people at that hospital are seeing your ad or your business. Uh, so digitally, you can do that on Facebook, Instagram, Google uh, advertising, like uh, pay-per-click ads. You can run geofencing is what it's called. Geofenced ads to target certain hospitals, uh, certain event that's going on. If there's a medical convention you wanna target to know about your business. And you, what the hope is, is that will catch the eye of someone who works there and they'll learn about you and keep your name out there. The goal of all of this is to keep your name in front of people and keep your name in the forefront of their mind. So the more they're seeing you and hearing about you, the better. That's the key to that daily posting. You wanna always keep your business out there and the name out, your name out there and people. But if you geofence, if you look up geofencing, you'll see you can do that on those platforms. It's kind of a cool way to do it. Kind of sneaky, but. <laughs> and, you know, I've seen people, you can even go down to, most of those places have staff pages. You can, you can harvest people's emails uh, and send them emails, introduce yourself. People have sent gift baskets before. Anything like that is a great way to introduce yourself. Even just going in personally, bringing a line of scrubs, introducing yourself to HR, whomever it is, setting up a time to talk to them. Here's what we have to offer. We're right here. We want to support you. Great questions. Anybody else? Okay, I have one more question. I'm sorry. I'm sure, like, sure. not like marketing thing. <laughs> no, ask so, away. So we're starting to use LinkedIn. I have my okay. LinkedIn set up, but it's a whole lot different than Instagram and Facebook. So what type of content um, do you suggest for LinkedIn? I know that's more professionals. I would be targeting more of the um, senior um, personnel at like hospitals and things like that because we're really trying to set up larger accounts. Um, so what do you suggest um, as far as that? Because I don't even know. Can you even send direct emails through LinkedIn? You have to you have to have a connection within two two steps to send a direct email or have a paid LinkedIn account to send direct emails. But uh, what Dixie mentioned earlier about uh, the scrubs, your content on LinkedIn wants to be more informational and professional. So less, you know, today's you know, whatever birthday more very informational about what you're selling and how you service your area and community. Um, you can run ads on LinkedIn, they're very expensive, but if you get the return from it, it's gonna work very well for you. And I think you can sign up for, I think it's called a professional account where you can send 10 in-mails, they're called, in-mail to direct people on LinkedIn. So you could look at the head of hiring or head of whatever on LinkedIn and send them a direct email if you have that paid account. But anything on LinkedIn, always you want to think professional and you want to think informational. People love sharing their knowledge on LinkedIn. So if you have great knowledge on scrubs or a product, put that in your post, put that in a video. You can do videos there too. And, the, and people love it. They'll love to share it. You can also write articles on LinkedIn too. If you're, if you're really that want to get into it, you could do article writing about scrubs and everything on LinkedIn. 
And just in case you didn't see the chat, Neil, um, Brittany responded with, uh, they use the brand rep in the hospital also, someone oh. who is a loyal shopper and can offer a set of scrubs for them to market oh, for very us. cool, yeah, that's perfect. Great feedback too, thank you. Um, one other question, how about direct mail for business to business? Direct mail still works great if you can get a reasonable rate. Um, if you, I've seen the most successful with direct mail for targeting zip code areas instead of a, so you target a zip code and you target businesses in, the, in that zip code and you can get a pretty good response from direct mail. Sometimes the ranges will be pretty high. So 2000 direct mails, if it's around $500 or so, I think that's a pretty fair rate, but I've seen them go up as high as a dollar dollar fifty per mail and I think that's a bit high. But direct mail still is effective. And anything to get your name out there, I'm not opposed to any type of marketing if you have the budget and it keeps your name out there. Just spread it around and make sure you're testing the waters on all of this. A lot, what I see with a lot of people is they'll get they'll get in a niche. I we run direct mail campaigns and that's all they'll do. Change it up every now and then, change it up every 60 days. Do something new with that money. See what kind of response you get. What's a good budget to set for marketing or does it just vary? Or does it just vary? Is that's, there like a minimum? That's totally, that's totally varies. Um, I recommend, we personally as a company recommend that everybody run a page like campaign on Facebook for at least $50 a month. That's very affordable for almost every business. And that'll get new customers. You can target that to regions around your business. That'll get $50 out there a month to get new customers on your page. Who then when you post organically, they're gonna get that message. Organic posts is when you just post on Facebook, you're not paying for it. But run that page like ad. And then if you wanna run a, re, you know, a bigger advertisement, start with a budget you can afford, $300 to $500 see what the response rate is and then kind of tune that you always want to expect to run multiple ads to tune to your best response so a one-off isn't really effective you always want to be able to do two or three ads to see what is effective but if you can run a i recommend everybody always run a page like campaign it's just so affordable and cheap that, and it keeps you growing And anybody have my email out there, you can email me questions. Obviously, we help people with this as well. If you if you want some more expertise, I'll gladly get into it with you. But you can email me. We will answer anything for free and try to get you on the right path for free because you're part of the URA. Uh, we're glad you're members. I love seeing people out at the conventions. I love seeing new members. We come around and talk to people all the time at the convention. You'll see us carrying a camera around. If you can make it out to those, they're really fun. <laughs> Well, I really appreciate everybody's time again today. I, I think there was a lot of great information out there. Hopefully you all learned something from it as well. Um, since this is a new, um, a new venture for us, please feel free to email me or Jennifer with any suggested topics, something you might wanna hear about. Um, we do have, uh, as I mentioned before, we've got next month, uh, we will feature uh, a, um, uh, somewhat, it's going to be a, a, a uh, we're going to keep it quiet for a while, but somebody from Charismatic, we're not going to let you know who that celebrity is <laughs> yet, but Charismatic will be on us, be with, with us on the August 27 call, so mark your calendar for that, um, and then September 24 will be after that, so again, it is the um, last Thursday of the month, um, so, uh, please join us for future ones. Let me know if you've got any other questions. Um, and we hope to see you next month. And if you need us in the meantime, you know where Jennifer and I are all the time. Mm -hmm. All right. Are we going to put this on uh, the website as a recording and social yes. media as well? Okay. We are going to try to do that again. This is the first one. So we're going <laughs> to figure out how to make that happen, but that is our intention.
All right. And Jennifer got the recording right after Joe started. <laughs> so I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> I got the main stuff. <laughs> I have one question, if you guys don't mind, before we end this session. Okay. All right. So I am. Um, I'm started a mobile uh, store and I'm the first in my city to do so and um, so I'm very excited about that is there any suggestions I know that I, as I was reading past um, surveys off of the URA um, that mobile don't get as much um, sales as um, brick and mortars so what what is there that I can do to help myself grow with with anything mobile i think i've seen a lot of success with twitter for mobile ventures so okay. if you can build a good twitter following and post out on twitter where you're at live or where you're going to be and the same with facebook and instagram but twitter is, seems to be very successful for mobile ventures people love to be in the now hey i know that store is going to be here right now so if you can tweet a bunch of people who might work at a hospital or at, at some place, I'm gonna be out front at 12 o'clock. They love that. So growing a, a Twitter audience, any audience that can be, Twitter is great for these instantaneous updates. So any audience that you can send that out to immediately would be great to grow. And then just the normal tactics of Facebook, making sure people know about you, keeping your name out there is key for all of it. Thank you. Uh huh. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Have a fantastic day, and we look forward to seeing you next month. Thank Bye -bye. you. This has been great. Thank you. <laughs>